Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm going to talk a little bit today about heat restrictions. I am uh, about 20 miles north of Bakersfield. I'm just south of Famosa. That's back there under the, the other side of the bridge there. But uh, it is not uncommon for it to get very warm here in the southern San Joaquin Valley. As a matter of fact, through the entirety of the San Joaquin Valley all the way up into uh, northern California, it gets hot in the valley. And it is not uncommon for it to reach 110 degrees. We had, uh, I believe, three days this past July. This is August. Uh, it's actually cooled off considerably. It's only about 90 degrees right now. It is 1030 in the morning. A month ago, it would have been 95 by now. As I was going to say, in July, we had three days that were 110. There are two heat restrictions, level one and level two. A level one heat restriction is issued when the temperature is forecast to be 110 degrees. A level two is issued when it is forecast to be 120. Now, it doesn't get 120 here in the valley. Uh, the, the record high in Bakersfield, anyway, is 118. And I doubt that any of the other places up the valley have ever seen 120. But it isn't uncommon for those kind of temperatures out in the Mojave Desert, uh, the Sonoran Desert, all the deserts out in the southwest can get extremely hot and it is not uncommon as I said for it to be over 120. When uh, those temperatures are forecast, whether it's a level one or a level two, those go into effect at 12 noon and come off at 9 p.m. Uh, they say that on average, the hottest part of a day is between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. So that gives the rail time to start moving around in the morning as it heats up and to move around again as it cools off. And the uh, track inspectors will make track inspections, will make traveling track inspections in their high railers during those hours. Take a break and watch the train go by. All right, well, train got by us there. I am way in the clear. I'm about 10 feet from the tracks, but I don't like surprising uh, train crews. I knew that train was coming because uh, I could see the signal was cleared down the other side of me. And it looks like they have another one cleared through behind him, but I don't see his headlight yet. I can see about three quarters of a mile that way and about 
oh, a mile and a half that way. So keeping my eyes open, knowing that any time is train time. But anyway, now that, that train's gone by, let's uh, flip this around and take a look at this bridge deck. All right, well, we are at a concrete bridge deck here. That is the noisy Highway 99. It's actually not that busy today, but anyway, it is still noisy, which uh, makes me even keep my head on more of a swivel for trains because I won't hear them till they're on top of me if I'm not paying attention. But anyway, at a concrete bridge deck, the concrete decks are a lot more solid than the wood decks. Not that uh, track structure issues can't happen at the ends of wood decks, but they're more likely to happen at a solid structure like a concrete bridge deck of this type. And even though it's not a long bridge, it is a very firm bridge. The uh, track structure on top of a bridge is different than the track structure, obviously, as it comes off on either side. Uh, it's just ballast and dirt over here. On the bridge, it's a little more solid. That creates a weak spot right here at the end of the bridge. And as it heats up and the rail begins to move longitudinally, it puts a lot of pressure on the track structure. And if there is a weak spot, like at the end of a bridge, and it doesn't matter where that weak spot is. It can be out there in the middle, just a place that's, that the track structure's got loose, the ballast has uh, been disturbed or something. It can move out there as well. But uh, it is, as I said, more prone to move at a place like this. And another place that that might happen is a location like this, where you have these concrete pads at a crossing that create a very secure structure across the street. And if that happens, if there's enough pressure and the track structure is weak enough, it will pop the rails out, it will bend. And that is called a sun king. Now the last derailment that I worked was back in, I believe 2016, was up at early mode, about 30 miles north of here, that way. And it was caused by a sun king. Oh, uh, as you'll see in these photographs right here. If you'll look right here at the rail, you'll see the bridge in the background and the sun kink that caused this derailment under the cars. And this is just some more photographs of the aftermath of that derailment. This was at the control point at South Early Mart. And for all the damage that was done here, nothing was damaged on the signal side, not the switch machine, nor any of the signals. All right, well, I've shown you up close. I don't need to be around the tracks anymore. But uh, the heat restrictions actually provide uh, two types of uh, protection, I guess you would say. And one is against something like a sun king. The other is that the heavier a train is, uh, as you get into track, you've heard flat spots on wheels, and you've seen trains uh, on uneven pieces of rail that uh, the train moves around on perhaps. And uh, the heavier a train is, the more likely it is for that train to knock a track out of line under these uh, hot conditions. So let's check out the uh, Union Pacific special system instructions and see what it says about trains operating under heat restrictions. During periods of extreme heat, conditions exist that could affect track structure. When advised by track bulletin that a level one or two heat restriction is in effect, restrict train speed within the limits of the track bulletin as shown in the tables below. Each platform, unit, or well of an intermodal car is to be considered one car when calculating tons per car. When not utilizing an energy management system and operating with a single distributed power consist located at the rear of the train, operate in independent mode with the distributed power one to three throttle notches below the lead consist in power and one to three throttle positions above the lead consist in dynamic brake except when cresting a grade. When operating with an energy management system, utilize the conditional speed function to restrict speed as required and allow the system to operate as designed. Note, comply with specific train handling procedures when required by local instructions. That just means that if uh, any local instruction is more or less restrictive than this, 
the local instruction will supersede the general order. Level one heat restriction, passenger trains, light engines, and freight trains averaging less than 90 tons per car, no additional restrictions. Freight trains averaging 90 tons or more per car in signaled territory, 50 miles per hour. Level two heat restriction, Chicago, all Metro trains, California, Metrolink, Pacific Surfliner, Capital Corridor, ACE trains, Caltran and San Joaquin trains, no additional restrictions. Passenger trains, light engines, and freight trains averaging less than 90 tons per car, 50 miles per hour. Freight trains averaging 90 tons or more per car, 40 miles per hour. Exceptions, when an exception to item 2D is shown on the subdivision page, the above restrictions do not apply to freight trains and the appropriate exception listed below applies instead. Exception one, all freight trains operating on the subdivision while heat restriction bulletin is in effect, 30 miles per hour. Same trains, under exception two, restricted speed not exceeding 10 miles per hour. So you can see that they're pretty serious about heat restrictions. All right, well, none of those conditions are going to apply today, at least not in the San Joaquin Valley. The uh, prediction today is for 101, which isn't uh, too bad at all, really. I know folks who live uh, in Canada and places in Europe, that would be devastatingly hot, but it's just not that bad around here. But anyway, uh, right now, it's about 90 degrees, and uh, that's really comfortable. I might go play a game of golf. No, I'm not. I'm tired from playing Saturday. But anyway, I hope that was uh, informative. This was by request of a subscriber a while back, asked me about heat restrictions, and uh, I wanted to wait till uh, summertime to do something like that, and uh, I didn't want to do it when it was 110, so I did it today. But anyway, keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpuller59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we'll see you all later.